And now, the East Westchester Corporation, maker of fashionable plastic fruits and vegetables for all of your home decorating needs, brings you the continuing saga of a poor body repair shop heiress on an endless search for love and togetherness on The Gathering Dusk. As we look in on the Fillmore household today, John, the dashingly ordinary fiancé of Martha, the delightfully underwhelming daughter, has just returned from the war. Martha, who has remained faithful for most of that time, is there to greet him. Martha, Martha, my dearest, I've returned from the war. It has been three long years, and now that I'm back, we can be married. Yes, how wonderful. My, how you've changed. Yes, fighting in a war does change a man. But it has not changed my feelings of devotion for you, my dearest. And look, I still have the handkerchief you gave me when I left. I kept it with me at all times. Ew, that's disgusting. Didn't you ever watch it during that whole time? Well, there was very little time for such things, I'm afraid. But now, we can be married and start a family just as we have always dreamed. Well, I don't know about that. You see, just as fighting in a war has changed you... Waiting for you as you were fighting in a war has changed me. Uh, Whatever do you mean? To fill my lonely hours, I took a job as a bookkeeper at the First United Federal Savings Bank. I found the work very enjoyable, and I worked hard and performed my duties excellently. Well, there is no problem with you working, my dear. It's quite admirable, actually. Admirable? That's the exact word my boss at the First United Federal Savings Bank used to describe my work. In fact, he liked my work so much that he promoted me. Well, that is excellent, of course. Excellent. That's the word my boss used to describe my performance in my new position. It seems I have quite a talent working with finances. A natural, you might say. I see. Well... uh, My boss was so impressed with my work that he took me on as a protege. He groomed me to replace him when he retired, which he did just last fall. I see. So you see, my darling John, I'm now a prosperous banker with a successful business and a great future ahead of me. Well, then there is no obstacle standing in our way to being married. Your success will support us until I can find employment. Well, that's just it. It just wouldn't do for a successful banker like myself to be married to an unemployed vagabond such as yourself. Well, uh, uh, perhaps you can find a position for me at the bank. Yes, As a matter of fact, there is a position that just opened up. I need a personal secretary. Well, I I don't know much about being a secretary, I'm afraid. Well, it might take some time, but I'd be willing to train you. Well, what would I need to do? It's quite simple, really. Take dictation, oversee the filing, handle my scheduling and correspondence, attend to any personal needs I might have, like dry cleaning or dog walking. In short, you just have to do whatever I tell you to. Well, yes, I suppose I could do that. Well, then it's settled. I will come to work for you, and we shall be married within the month. Married? Oh, no. We can never be married. Uh, but why not? The president of a successful bank could never marry her personal secretary. It just isn't done. But I have waited all this time and endured three years of war in the hopes of marrying you. Yes, I know that must be a disappointment to you, but you can console yourself by preparing my notes for the upcoming shareholders' meeting and make an appointment for me to get my hair done. Now, off with you. Uh, Yes, ma'am. 